Who was John the 23rd, and why is he important? Let's take a little look. All right, well, we have two documents by John the 23rd. One is Mater et Magistra, and the other is Pachamenteris. We see Mater et Magistra uh, was released in 1961 and Pachamenteris was released in 1963. Uh, but let's take a little look at the um, life of John the 23rd, and we'll see uh, a few things about him. Well, he was born in 1881, and he died in uh, 1963, June the 3rd. He was born Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli. So we have uh, Giuseppe Roncalli, that's what he's generally known as. Um, he was the Pope to follow uh, Pius XII. And Pius XII made Roncalli a cardinal and made him the Patriarch of Venice, which is a very important position in the Catholic Church. Um, Roncalli was unexpectedly elected Pope on the 28th of October in 1958 at the age of 76. It took 11 votes, 11 session votes, to get him elected. Pope John XXIII surprised those who expected him to be a caretaker Pope by calling the historic Second Vatican Council which opened um, in 1962, in October. So, of course, he was looked at as a transitional pope, and he was looked at as an aging pope that would bridge the gap transitionally between Pius XII and the next pope. Now, John XXIII made many passionate speeches during his pontificate. His views on equality were summed up in his statement we are all made in God's image, and thus we are all godly alike. He made an impact on the Catholic Church, opening up to uh, politics um, and various changes. And most of these changes we can see happen in the 1960s and 70s when the Second Vatican Council was implemented. Uh, very a difficult period in the time of the church. But let's step back for one moment and take another look at John the 23rd from the beginning. Well, born Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli. He was uh, born in 1881 in Bergamo, which is uh, northern Italy. He was the fourth child uh, of a family with 13 children. He was ordained in 1904. He was eventually made bishop in 1925. He was ordained, or excuse me, he was elevated to the cardinalate in 1953. And he was eventually elected pope in 19. 58. And of course, as I said already, he came after which pope? That's correct. Pius XII. He died in 1958. So he was elected pope in 1958. And then he died in what year? 1963. That's correct. Now, what were... Uh, John the 23rd's major achievements. I mean, the things that we think about um, in the modern period, um, what were his major achievements? Well, the first one, obviously, um, is the Second Vatican Council, which was held in uh, Rome from 1962 to 1965. It was called, so the council was announced, or it was announced that there was going to be a council in 1959. Took everyone by surprise. There essentially hadn't been a council for about 100 years, and about mm, 
400 years before that. So it's the third council in about 400 and some years. Not a very regular thing. No. What was John's motivation for calling this council? His goal was to open the windows and the doors of the church, so to speak. Um, perhaps make it a, more easy for the church to engage in politics and worldly affairs. In essence, his goal was to modernize the church. And the emphasis behind um, this modernization was going to be pastoral. Uh, so looking to the needs of each Christian pastorally, or um, uh, perhaps in, on a day-to-day -day basis in uh, relation to what people uh, encounter in the world. How does their faith um, essentially work as they engage in the world? So he also had a need for the church to become more involved with affairs of the state. And he was also influential in uh, broadening the uh, racial makeup, if you will, of the cardinals. He was the first to uh, make cardinals from Africa, Japan, and the Philippines. Which is, in the 1960s, you could think that to not have cardinals from them, those areas uh, is leaving a large portion of the uh, Catholic world out of the voting process for the next pope. And he was also very influential in pushing and promoting ecumenical movements and ecumenical relations. And we know that ecumenical relations are um, or can be looked at as the attempt by the Catholic Church to engage in dialogue, conversation um, with Christians who are not Catholic. All right, for our purposes, I think we will look on page 77. We'll look at uh, Pope John the 23rd, or Pope St. John the 23rd and Mater et Magistra. The Pope John XXIII published his encyclical Mater et Magistra, which is Latin for mother and teacher, in 1961 to mark the 70th anniversary of Rerum Novarum. And we all know who wrote Rerum Novarum, do we not? Yes, Leo XIII in 1891. So John XXIII revisited the teachings of that encyclical and considering many newer new things that had appeared in the intervening years, advances in technology, for example, that enabled space exploration, but also weapons of mass destruction. The world map had significantly changed after the demise of the old empires. Now nations were emerging into independence as communism promised them a worker's paradise. The encyclical took issue with such vain promises. So the encyclical also decried the imbalance of wealth in the world, calling upon developed nations to share methods and means of production with those whose farming, for example, was still relatively primitive. John XXIII, who had grown up in a rural area, devoted a significant portion of the letter to issues related to agriculture. This sets his letter apart from those of his predecessors, which focused more on factories and urban centers. He also addressed the pseudo-scientific claims of his contemporaries, who were sounding alarms about impending overpopulation, he affirmed the place of the family in society and economy. He appraised marriage and called all people to respect its indissolubility. If anyone had doubted the binding character of Catholic social doctrine, Mater et Magistra settled the matter, stating that the permanent validity of the Catholic Church's social teaching admits of no doubt. 